Facebook Live. Good afternoon. It's Women's Women's History Month, and it's the final three days of this week, and it has been a great month. I have taken time to do a lot of things, and I, today I want to kind of recap the month. But before I do that, just a reminder that this month is special. It is the first anniversary of the outbreak of the pandemic. And you remember where you were last year around this time and what you were doing and what you could not do. So we have come a long way in this pandemic era. It's not over yet. Yeah, we are still in the woods. However, we have made progress. And how have we coped? I know I've coped by using art and music. Let me recognize the music I'm playing. It is the music of Alfie Moss, a famous jazz singer. And this is her album, New Beginnings. And you can get her album at www.cdbaby.com slash Alfie Moss and that's A-L-F-I-M-O-S-S -S. and this is a great album there are eight tracks on it I love the, the, the tracks what's going on here's that rainy day oh yesterday was a rainy day on a clear day dindy misty no woman a cry, one love, sweetest taboo. That's Alfie Ma uh, Alfie's um, album. So that's the way I'm starting today. As I said, I want to do a recap of Women's History Month because we are in the final three days. And it has been a very, very exciting month. Because I, I, I was looking back and I am amazed of what I have been able to accomplish during the month of March. So, in retrospect, the month opened with a four-woman exhibition at Lafayette Gallery. And we call ourselves the Fab Four Artists, Women Artists. That exhibition is actually on its way down. It's coming down to make way for the next exhibition. But it was a great exhibition. And among the four women are two emerging artists, Kendra Dupree and Megan Farrar. And I had the pleasure of mentoring these two artists, helping them to get their work out there, to price their work, build up their motivation because yes that's what women's history is about mentoring the sisters that's the theme that I used for women's history month 2021 mentoring the sisters to reach for the stars and I've mentored young women as well as young girls Saturday was spectacular I had a 15-year-old girl from Middletown who came in for a class. I'd given her a scholarship or a gift certificate, and she came in for her class. Her parents had been passing last Monday, and they look through the window. When I see people looking, I always go to welcome them. I welcomed them in, and they told me they had a daughter who was extraordinarily good at art. And they would love me to meet her. So I, with a kind gesture, I said, sure. So I gave them a gift certificate. And Saturday morning, they brought her here. And if you have watched, uh, if you have watched my videos, if you have seen my posts, you would have seen the stunning work of art by this 50, gi giant-sized canvas. I've never even use those sizes very big canvas and she created some prolific works of art 
And yes, she was here for mentoring. So one of the questions I asked her, are you selling your work at this time? And she said, yes. She said, I sold one piece. And I, you know, I probed because I want to help her. She said, well, I told the lady she could give me what she, whatever she wanted to give me for it. I said, no, my dear, not so. Your, your talent, your time values money. You can't tell, if you tell people, oh, give me what you want, just give me something for this, then sure enough, they're gonna give you a pittance for, for an original work. So that's the role I am playing to mentor emerging artists. So going forward, um, she won't be giving away her work anymore. There is a price. I did that when I started out because I didn't know the value of my work. But uh, for the younger artists, I'm not going to allow them to fall in that same pit. <laughs> I call it a pit for real, to give away your work. Art is wealth. It is more than beauty on the wall. And original art, artists should be paid while they're alive, yes. Support the living artists. We want to, to enjoy the fruits of our labor, while we are here on this earth. That's what I'm telling my young artists, and that's the message. So back to the month and how it went. I had another eight-year-old who had come in the week before, and it was just amazing how engaging that young girl was. She went around the room and looked at all the artist's work and made her selections, gave feedback as to why she selected pieces of their work. And then she created a masterpiece. She chose her own theme. And I was surprised. Her theme was Black Lives Matter. She had a reason to paint that theme. And she explained it. So yes, we need to mentor or Young girls, mentor the sisters. If you're just joining me, good afternoon and welcome to La Fête Gallery's Vision Center. And I am the owner, award-winning folk artist Eunice La Fête. I am doing some reflections on the month of March. I start out reflecting on the pandemic and where we were last year at this time, and then I went on to explaining the theme of the art exhibition, which came down, that exhibition came down over the weekend. But the theme of the month's exhibition, as far as the purpose and the vision of the center, the theme, Mentoring the Sisters. Mentoring the sisters to reach for the stars. Yes, right over there. So we mentor these young girls and young women, and we are trying to get them to reach for the stars, to accomplish their goals, to use their talents. Yes. And that's the music of Alfie Moss, a famous jazz singer, local. Okay. How else did that month play out? What else took place during the month of March in the Fate Gallery? I said my mission was to mentor and I carry that out. And I'm very pleased of my... Um, accomplishments and how I feel that I've touched the lives of some young girls out there and young artists out there. Good afternoon, those who are just joining. It is still Women's History Month. We are on the final three days. And I'm taking this opportunity to reflect on what we did. So the first event was the grand opening of the Fab Four Artists exhibition in Lafayette Gallery, and that was on the first Friday 
in March. And that continued with, as I said, mentoring young girls. Then, during the month, I recognized women in history. I couldn't do all. Well, here's my philosophy. Women's History Month should be 365. As I said, I didn't have time in a month to recognize all the powerful women out there and to showcase what they're doing. So it continues. The same for Black History Month and all those months that they designate as months or days. I extend it to the full length of the year, 365. So I recognize some powerful women past and present. And today I have a phenomenal woman to recognize. So among those I recognize were some of my sheroes, the great Dr. Maya Angelou, who wrote that famous poem, Still I Rise. And that's my painting, which is a tribute to her and to that poem, Still I Rise. That poem, as I mentioned, was a source of stability for me when I worked in corporate America and had to deal with issues, the various issues out there. Issues of age, race, issues of national origin, and all of those issues, still I rise. And that was the poem that helped me along with music. So I recognized um, Dr. Maya Angelou. And I recognize the late and great Shirley Chisholm because she was the woman who paved the way for our current vice president, the first black female vice president. That's my portrait of her right there. VP Kamala Harris. Her way was paved by the great Shirley Chisholm, who in 1972, yes, you know, looking back, they would consider her audacious. She had the audacity to run for president. In 1972, she never won, but it was still a very important development. And yes, you know, she paved the way. I recognized also the first African-American grandmother that lived in the White House. And that is the mother of former First Lady Michelle Obama, that is Marian Anderson. I recognized her Yes, as the first African-American grandma. And I have created some stories about the importance of grandma in the lives of especially young girls to shape them. Because when the women, have, career women, have to go to work, it's the grandmothers who are there to help raise those young girls. So yes, uh, Marion... Anderson, she did a phenomenal job helping to raise her two granddaughters. And th as I said, throughout the month, I came on with a lot of recognitions. I not only recognized, I took on the issues, oh yeah, the issue of pay. The 24th of March was equal pay day. And I laid it out. I had a chart with 82 cents in coins. And then I had a dollar bill. And I laid it out to explain that for every dollar a man makes, a woman makes only 82 cents. And that is wrong. 
It's about equity. It is about non-discrimination. It is about breaking up the good old boys network out there and giving women their fair share. I dealt with it. I take on issues head on. I don't shy away from the issues. Okay, so that was one of the hot buttons of Women's History Month. Well, today, I want to recognize a phenomenal Shiro. Yeah. A phenomenal Asian American woman. And this morning, she was on the Today Show. I sat on my seat and I listened. I was just in awe. She wrote her book. The book is titled, Every Day is a Gift. Every Day is a Gift. Uh, well, I'm going to purchase that book. I have to get the book. And that phenomenal Asian American woman is none other than Senator Tammy Duckworth. Here is the path. Well, it's her story is so very emotional. For those who don't know, she was an Air Force pilot. She was shot down. Her helicopter was shot down over Iraq. Yes, she was out there piloting that helicopter. She lost both legs, both legs. And this morning when she explained, she said she didn't want to replace her legs with the, you know, the, the prosthetic legs. She, that's why she didn't get that. Because she said something would be missing. She didn't want that. She wanted to show what she endured. And she endured a lot. Her book, when she explains some aspects of the book, and she has two daughters. She was the first senator to be a mother while being a senator. Yes, she had a uh, in 2000, I think it was 2018, she bore her second child, a daughter. Her accomplishment, yes. And let me put this picture here. But, you know, always have to go to the visual. Senator Tammy Duckworth is a Purple Heart recipient. Yes, she received the Purple Heart. She's the recipient of Purple Heart. And how well deserving. She served in many capacities. She was former Assistant Secretary to the Department of Veteran Affairs. And she was among a handful of first army women to, to be involved in a mission, that mission, that war, go to war we're talking about, that Iraqi war. Okay, then she championed the cause of environmental justice. And more recently, you know what happened in Alabama, over a week ago, we know, we know what happened. Yes, she had to come up as an advocate for Asian Americans. Because she, throughout her life, she said she has endured a lot of hate. You know, hate, hate, as in your ethnicity, hate for being who you are. She has gone through that. And I think just um, a week ago, someone had made the remark that, well, well, we have 
a VP of Asian background. Uh, she was recommending some a high level Asian to be somewhere there out in that White House to look about Asian American affairs. And then somebody had the nerve to say, well, as if you should be satisfied. So VP Kamala Harris, she has Asian background. Her mother was from India, so she has South Asian background. That has nothing to do with it. You see how narrow-minded we are in this country? Well, guess what? They listened. Yeah, because she, she was going to... Oh, yeah, she was going to rock the boat. And they listened and appointed someone in that position. Naturally so. So given the dynamics of what is happening and what has been happening over the last year, where Asian Americans are being targeted, well, we know, oh, target is not the word now, are being slaughtered. We know that eight people lost their lives, and I think six of, yes, six of them Asians. Yes, it shouldn't be. So we need to stand up. Stand up, let me stand up right now. And let me point the camera on this work of art right here. Red, yellow, black, white, brown. I covered it all. And the piece was created in 2002. Yeah, that's the year I created it. I named it United We Stand. And given what happened in Alabama, the, the, the hate crimes against Asians, I updated the title. Well, yes, I, I said it was United We Stand. I inserted the word M-U-S-T in capital. So it is not United We Stand. It's United We Must Stand Against Hate in this country. There's too much of a United We Must Stand. Stand against hate. Stand against bigotry. Stand against all the crimes out there. Oh, yeah. You know, you know them. It's always those stammers. Okay, yes, so united we must stand. Stand. Stand up and reconcile with where we are right now and where we are going and the importance of embracing diversity. It is our diversity that makes us a strong nation. Ironically, it is the same diversity which keeps ripping us, tearing us apart every day. And nothing else says it better than this piece of work over here in this corner. Right here. Let me put a spotlight on it. The work of art right there. Uh, if you get a better vision from looking at it from this angle. The melting pot versus the salad bowl. Yes, so the Asian population is a strong component. The Asian population is a strong component of our salad bowl of cultures. America is no longer the what was conceived to be a great melting pot where we should all just be like a stew. You know when you make that nice stew? Rather, we should, we are a salad bowl of culture where every ingredient is like when you make that toss salad. You can pick out your lettuce, your peas, your corn, all the little ingredients in it. And then you pour that wonderful dressing and whip it up. You have a great salad bowl. That's where we are now. So the ill-conceived melting pot, where it's assumed we are homogenous, which we are not, 
and we should just all get along. Don't rock the boat. We have emerged. We have emerged from that philosophy. And you notice the American flag on my salad bowl of cultures? What it's saying, that we all rally around the flag. It is a symbol that we gravitate to when we have problems. We hoist that flag. We put it at, you know, when some, when all these tragedies are going on. But let's not wait to use the flag. Let me get back to the concept of or culture as a salad bowl of cultures. Yes, that's what it is. And everyone doesn't know this. And children who are coming up, we can't expect, assume that children are just going to learn it automatically. No, we have to teach it. And the school system, and I, I'm going to say it because I served nearly three decades. I served in the school system from, uh, from kindergarten through college. I taught at every level. And I say, I'm saying it without hesitation, that there is a void in our education system when it comes to diversity. It's like a hot potato or hot pot. Nobody wants to touch it. They don't want to be sued or it's too controversial. So they allow the hate crime. They allow the early signs of racial disharmony of stereotype, they allow it to fester out. I saw it in the classroom, and I had to nip it in the bud. I had to nip it in the bud. That is why I created this piece. Came out of my classroom one Monday morning. This piece right there, right there. Title diversity. There goes Asian, Caucasians. We have the, we have browns. We have blacks. And by the way, this piece represents the demography of my homeland, Jamaica. It is uh, from or motto out of many, one people. And I am again putting the spotlight on it to explain that our school system is lacking and the teachers are not doing a good job of addressing issues of race and racism in the classroom. They are skirting it and hiding away from it. You can't do that. Yeah, that same piece I just showed you. Yes, one child was in my classroom one Monday morning. I was teaching math. And a brewer was in the back of my classroom. Kid was laughing his head off. So I stopped the class. I said, come here, come here. My, it was a young boy. God, he was reading a book. I said, bring me that book. Let's share. We want to laugh too. So he brought the book. It was a National Geographic magazine open to a page with a scantily dressed African man wearing just a loin cloth. And he poked the book in my face and said, Miss, is this how all the people in Jamaica look? Well, he knew I was Jamaican. That was a teachable moment. So I erased the word math. It was no longer a math class. It became a diversity class. I said, no, they look like me. And tomorrow, I'm going to bring you some photos of the people in Jamaica and my family so you can see what they look like. I did, and I inserted in the curriculum a component on diversity. Yeah, I took it on my own. So every week, there was a session on diversity and racial harmony. So much so, I have several pieces of work. I have a piece back in, in the back of my room titled, Let's Unite. I taught them to say this affirmation, if we hold hands, we cannot fight. Yeah, that, whenever there were little racial things in the classroom, I would have them say, if we hold hands, we cannot fight. 
And those young kids, they are great men and women out there today. I see them all around. And they thank me for the experience they had in my classroom. So I am putting the spotlight back on what is happening to Asian Americans in our country and to African Americans, any form of discrimination against any race, red, yellow, black, white, brown, is abhorrent and should be condemned and should be punished in the worst way. Yeah. But we, we shouldn't have to get to that stage. It begins with the children. No child was born a racist. No child was born a bigot. No child was born a murderer and mass killer. Those were children. How did they get there? How, what happened along the way? Those innocent children. Let's ask ourselves a question. Question, as parents and guardians, what kind of job are we doing out there to help the next generation to understand, respect, and value our diversity? Our di diversity makes us strong. It's the same diversity that's tearing us apart. So yes, for Women's History Month, I want to salute again Senator Tam, uh, Tammy Duckworth, a Shira, shot down in Iraq. Her helicopter was shot down. She lost both legs. And the process of recovery was hard, but she was determined. She was resilient. And she's a powerhouse today in the Senate. They listened to her when, when Tammy Duckworth speaks. They listen. And she's advocating now against hate crimes that is being left, that is being put against Asian Americans. And hate crimes of all types, we got to stop it. But again, do our job as parents and guardians and teachers and preachers and etc. When the preachers go in the pulpit, they should be preaching about racial harmony and diversity. The teachers should be preaching that. The community advocates. If everybody was on the same page, but no, they're they're afraid. They won't they don't want to touch it. They're going to be considered that is a more that look. Take it on. That's the only way we're going to re re achieve racial harmony. When we all get together and address those issues. And when we all as parents and guardians raise our children. And even when they're grown, even when they're grown, we still need to address it with them. So you have a law enforcement person. Your son is a law. I'm just using an example. Your son is a law enforcement officer. And that son is using stereotype and is abusing power against minorities and blacks. What are you going to do about it if you know? You have the right respond. You have the responsibility as a parent to talk to that son. You'd be surprised. I talk to my son about different things. He's grown. You know, you know I said, Mom, I'm grown. Look. You can't be too grown. I'm your mom. <laughs> See, I'm giving advice, but we're not doing that. Once they're out of the home, they're gone. They're on their own. No, we need that tender, loving care all the way up to adulthood to help our children. So then, yes, so it's Women's History Month. And my challenge to the women out there I just went through the list of things I did during Women's History Month, and I did it from my heart because I want the next generation of women to be the women who are going to balance this world. So, yeah, balancing the world. Yeah, we're training women to balance the world. And the young girls out there, we need to, to empower them. That's my piece out there, balance the world. You know, it's like every issue I can find 
an, um, an image to go with it. So what did you do during Women's History Month? Did you help a woman out there in any way at all? Or is it just me, myself, and I? Yeah, that's the mentality out there. It's about time. It's about time. We start to be inclusive. We start to take responsibility and help our brothers and sisters out there. So that, that being said, notice I devoted this, this video was specifically designed to devote to Women's History Month culmination as we're getting into that. And more so, the key point of today's was to recognize and honor a phenomenal Asian American woman, Senator Tammy Duckworth. I applaud her for her courage, her bravery, and for all that she went through. And still, she rise. Thank you for watching.